Elon Musk just admitted China's new Ju QE3 rocket could beat SpaceX's Falcon 9 because it blends Starship's steel and methane with a proven SpaceX design. But to even reach the launch pad, it had to survive a 4,000-kilometer ordeal that nearly wrecked the entire mission. So how did land space pull off the impossible? And what about Ju Kui 3 has the world's top rocket builder worried? The answer begins with a journey no one expected to succeed. Convoy headlights cut through the darkness as Ju Kui 3 began its journey across China. The rocket's massive core, loaded onto a reinforced transporter, faced a route stretching 4,000 kilometers from Huzhou in Jiangsu province to the remote launch site at Juquan. This wasn't a smooth drive. Within the first few days, the logistics team was forced to swap out dozens of tires, each one shredded by the sheer weight and length of the load. Mechanics crawled under the trailer in the rain, tools clanging as the clock ticked down on delivery deadlines. Then a critical fluid system sprang a leak, threatening to immobilize the entire operation in the middle of a provincial highway. While police escorts cleared traffic jams and local authorities rerouted harvest trucks, Landspace's engineers worked through the night, patching lines and checking pressure gauges by flashlight. The stress grew with every kilometer. Every bump, every pothole sparked fresh worries about hidden damage to the rocket's structure and engines. By the time the convoy arrived at Juquan, most of the buffer days in the schedule had evaporated. On October 14th, satellite images confirmed Juqui 3's arrival at launch area 96B. For the transport crew, the relief was real, but so was the anxiety. Rumors swirled that the vehicle might have suffered more than cosmetic scrapes. Launch authorities demanded a full inspection and a high-stakes static fire test before anyone could even think about lighting the engines for real. The rocket had survived the road, but its readiness was still in question. Launch site safety officials at Juquan wasted no time once Juqui 3 arrived. With rumors circulating about possible internal damage from the cross-country haul, the mandate was clear. Only a full propellant static fire of all nine engines would satisfy the safety review. Landspace's engineering team spent days checking weld seams, revalidating sensor links, and recalibrating tank pressurization systems. The rocket was rolled out, anchored to the launch mount, and loaded with supercooled methane and liquid oxygen, enough to match a real launch scenario. At midnight, the command came. All nine Tian Kui 12A engines roared to life, unleashing over 7,500 kilonewtons of thrust. For 45 seconds, the rocket's structure endured the same forces it would face during actual liftoff. Engineers tracked every data channel, ignition curves, chamber pressures, vibration harmonics, and thermal readings, searching for any sign of weakness. The flame trench channeled the heat and exhaust safely away, while emergency crews stood by, ready for any anomaly. When the engines shut down, the verdict was immediate. No unexpected pressure drops, no structural alarms, no leaks or cracks. The team's relief was visible. Months of design, fabrication, and risk had been validated in less than a minute. Range authorities signed off on the results, clearing Ju QA3 for the next phase of launch preparations. The static fire wasn't just a technical requirement, it was proof that the rocket had survived its ordeal and was ready to take on the challenge of flight. The campaign could finally move forward, with confidence restored. Stainless steel forms the backbone of Juku 3's structure, setting it apart from most rockets in service today. Land space engineers selected high strength steel not for tradition, but for its resilience under the stress of repeated launches and re entry. Unlike aluminum lithium alloys, which dominate older designs, stainless steel tolerates rapid heating and cooling without warping or cracking. Welded rings and domes run the full length of the 4.5 meter diameter core, each seam built to handle the extreme pressure swings and vibration that come with a nine engine ignition. This choice isn't just about brute strength. Stainless steel's high temperature tolerance means the rocket can survive the intense friction of atmospheric re-entry then cool down and be readied for another flight with minimal inspection. Small scratches and heat stains, common after a hard landing, rarely threaten its integrity. 
The result is a structure designed for quick turnaround and low maintenance, a key advantage when the goal is to fly the same hardware 20 times or more. Propulsion is equally forward-looking. Jukui 3's first stage packs nine Tianqui 12A engines, each burning a mix of liquid methane and liquid oxygen, called methalox. This fuel combination is cleaner than the kerosene used by older rockets, leaving behind less soot and residue inside the engines. Cleaner combustion means fewer clogs and less time spent scrubbing out carbon between flights. Methalox engines also run cooler, reducing wear on critical parts and extending the service life of each booster. The second stage relies on a single Tianqui 15B, purpose-built for vacuum efficiency and long-duration burns. Every design decision, from the steel's alloy to the engine's cycle, points toward a future where rockets can be launched, landed, and refueled with the speed and reliability of commercial airliners. For Landspace's propulsion team, durability and ease of maintenance are not just selling points, they are the foundation for true reusability. ZhuQ-3's numbers put it in direct competition with the world's leading reusable rockets. The first version, Block 1, stands 66.1 meters tall and delivers up to 11.8 tons to low Earth orbit if expended, or 8 tons when the booster is brought back for landing. Block 2, already in development, stretches to 76 meters and raises the stakes. 21.3 tons to orbit if the booster is not recovered, 18.3 tons with a downrange landing, and 12.5 tons if it returns to the launch site. Both versions rely on nine Tianqui-12 engines, with Block 2 switching to the upgraded 12B model for a combined thrust of around 900 tons at liftoff. By comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9 delivers 22.8 tons to orbit when expended and 15.6 tons with a full booster return. Its nine Merlin 1D engines produce just over 7,600 kilonewtons of thrust, slightly edging out Jukui 3 Block 1, but falling behind Block 2's projected output. Falcon 9's core diameter is 3.7 meters, narrower than Jukui 3's 4.5 meter core and 5.2 meter fairing, which allows more flexibility for bulky satellite payloads. Both rockets claim a minimum of 20 reuses per booster, but only Falcon 9 has proven it, with more than 250 landings and over 150 reflights logged. Juku 3's promise rests on its stainless steel construction and clean burning methalox engines, which could lower maintenance and speed up turnaround between launches. If Block 2's numbers are realized in practice, Jukui 3 could match or even surpass Falcon 9's reusable performance, at least on paper. The real test will come when Landspace attempts to recover and relaunch the same hardware, moving from projections to proven results. Landspace's launch team moved quickly after static fire clearance shifting Jukui-3 into a series of final rehearsals. Engineers guided the rocket through a full vertical integration sequence, raising the booster upright and checking every interface, fuel lines, avionics, and stage connections under launch conditions. In September, the team completed a 10-kilometer hop test, firing the engines for a controlled ascent and landing. The booster reignited mid-flight, steered with grid fins, and touched down on target, validating key recovery systems. With the final checks complete, CEO Zhang Changwu set the official window for the maiden orbital attempt, aiming for late September or November. The schedule was tight, with only a narrow launch window before other missions at Juquan would block the pad. Downrange in Minkin County, a dedicated landing zone, equipped with fire suppression and tracking, waited for the first real booster return. Every step now pointed toward a single moment, Jukui 3's first shot at orbit and recovery. Landspace's campaign is more than a technical trial. It is the front line of a national push to dominate the next era of space. The company was founded in 2015 after a government decision opened launch services to private investment, igniting a wave of new entrants across China. Now, more than 20 firms compete for contracts, backed by a trillion yuan fund announced for emerging technologies in 2025. Provinces like Shanghai and Zhejiang offer hundreds of millions in low-interest loans and direct grants, fueling everything from rocket factories in Huzhou 
to satellite internet ventures. While the industry runs on commercial ambition, oversight remains. Dual-use clauses in investment agreements keep state and military interests closely tied to private launches. For policymakers and investors, Jukui 3's outcome is not just about a single rocket. It is a measure of whether China's hybrid model can deliver global leadership in commercial space. Right now, China's private rockets are not just catching up. They are setting new benchmarks in global spaceflight. As land space prepares to launch Jukui 3, one fact is clear. Space leadership is no longer a given. Whoever lands first, the race now shapes the balance of technological power.